the name of Jesus. That other God, this world we are going to hear this day, it will be a source of commendation. It will change also even for the better. He has your children in the name of Jesus. Thank you for lasting, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Uh, it is, uh, there's something that is happening around us that we may not notice, that we may not even recognize. And, and so and that's what I want to talk about this morning because it's not something new. It has been, that has been, in, it has been there even from the foundation of the earth. And so uh, today I bring a word that I tie to God on trial. God on trial. God, we are living in a time that we put God on trial. The Bible tells us that we are not that we are not we are not mere machines or products of biological chances. We are not we are not we are, we are not created by chance. The Bible tells us that God created us wonderfully and specially, and that He created us. Uh, we are so special in His sight that He created us us in His image. And one, and because of that. He created us with free free will. The, 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 uh, for us to make our own free to make our own choices in life. However, like any action, there's always repercussion. There's also effect. So one of the af aftermath of that uh, free will that God has given to us is that, is that from the time in memoria, the unbelieving world has insisted has always insisted on putting God on trial. We all know how, how the first parent, how they fell. God gave them instruction. Satan came to them. Is, is that, are you sure that that's what God told you? Are you sure? And we all know the end of the result. After that, we are told God sent the second Adam. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And we put him on trial. And that is not even enough for us. Today, we are still putting God on trial. So, um, the Bible tells us that each and, each and every one of us we will account for our choices we make here on earth. That a day is coming that each and every one of us will stand before our maker and give an account of what we did while we are on earth. But Paul said in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 10. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 10. He said, for we all must appear before the judgment seat of Christ that each one may receive the things done in the body according to what he has done, whether good or bad. So I don't want anybody, don't be deceived. Every one of us will receive a report. A report card is coming. A report card will come that we will show to us what we did where we, on, where we are on this planet Earth. The judgment day is coming. And one thing, and why I was why I stumbled about the scripture this week, I also came to realize that this judgment, that judgment day, is not only about, uh, about us. He asks us also to do more about God Himself. God Himself, we have to answer on that day so many questions. God will answer so many questions. The judgment has to do more, has to do a lot about him. On that day, answer will be given to the question like, has God been fair? Has he really been fair? Has God been just? Has he been loving as he, as he claimed to be? This is because the world we live in today, there's a raging controversy between good and bad. Everything about God is being questioned. We question about our, the, the, uh, the sense that God gave to us. In fact, this week in Germany, a law was, uh, a, 
an act was was passed into law in Germany on Wednesday called Self-Determination Act. And, it gave, and that law gave every parent a right to, to transition their baby from the cells they gave to them, the, the, the source they are born with, from the day of their birth. That, so if you give birth today and it happens to be a male and you don't want a male, you can transition that baby from the day she was born to a female. God is being put on trial. And not only that, they, put a, they, they now put a fine of 10,000 euro for anyone, anyone who disclose the original sex of the baby. God is being put on trial. Satan, the fallen angel, has declared that God is a Satan detector. God is saying to us today that God's character cannot be trusted. That is portrayed is God, Satan is portraying God to us as being a service detector. It, a God, that God is requesting obedience while giving little or nothing in return. Satan is telling us today that God has mismanaged, that God has, is charging God today that God has, has, has mismanaged the world. And that his do's and don'ts is too, is too much. He's receiving our happiness. He's not allowed to live the life he wants to live. My brother and sister, don't, don't be fool. A day is coming. A day, that is, a, a day is coming when rest, when everything will be put on rest. At the very center of this child is the final judgment. It's the hour of judgment that the Bible tells us in Revelation chapter 14, verse 6 to 7. In Revelation chapter 14, verse 6 to 7, the Bible says, He said, Then I saw another angel, another angel flying in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach to those who dwell on earth. Not to preach to those people on heaven, to preach to those on the earth, to every nation, to every tribe, to every tongue and people, saying with a loud voice, Fear God and give him glory. For the hour of his judgment has come. And worship him who made heaven and the earth, the sea and the spring of life. The hour of his judgment. The hour of his judgment. I believe that on, the, on that hour of his judgment is for you and I and the entire universe to see the goodness of God on that day. To see the goodness of God. Because on that day, the Bible tells us that all of us will see once and for all that God has done everything he can do to save us. That God has done everything he can do to save humanity. Therefore, that if anyone is not saved, on that day, God will not be blamed. Because he has done everything he could do to save us. The final, I believe that on, uh, the, final, the final judgment, among other things, we reveal, re, reveal three things that I want to discuss this morning about God. It will reveal three things about him. And the first thing, this hour of judgment, is going to reveal about God, is that it will reveal his justice and his mercy. That one of the allega allegations that Satan has levied against God is that he's unfair. That is unjust. We all remember the, par the parable of the talent. When the master came back and asked them to give account of what they did with the talent he gave to them. The one he gave five, he came, he said, oh, master, I have planted, I have, I have invested, I have invested it, and I have five additional ones. He talked, he talked to the second one. Oh, the one he gave two, he said, master, I have used your talent, and I have gained another two. Then when he turned to the one, he gave one. He said in Matthew chapter 25, verse 24. Matthew chapter 25, verse 24. He said, Lord, I know you. I know you to be a hard man, reaping where you have not sown, and gathering where you have not scattered seed. What is he saying there? That God is unfair. 
God is unjust. The one who wants to reap where he has not sown. But on that day of judgment, my brother and sister, each of us individually will appear be, be in, in judgment before him. And Jesus will ask us, each of us, before the entire universe, we, he will ask you, he will ask, he will call me, he said, Taiwo, stand here. And I will stand in. And he will ask the whole universe, everybody, because we are told that every one of us will be in attendance. And he will ask you, why I have done anything more to save this boy that is standing before you? Where I have done any, is there anything I could have done that I did not, that I, I failed to do while he's, he's on earth that I could have done to save him? And that day we are told that my record, your record, the record that and God is a good keeper. He's a record keeper. There is no mistake about him. There is no computer failure about him. A record, will be, we are told that a record will be, will, will be my record will be opened. Every minute, detail record will open and it will be shown to the whole world that there's nothing more that God could have done to save me. That I fail, that, that if I do, if, that if, if otherwise, it is based on the choices that I made while I am here. My prayer is that you and I will not miss that day. I will, uh, anything that we need to do correctly to make that day, to make it a fulfilling day, God will give unto us in the name of Jesus. Records on that day, record, the, the record will open. It will show countless times that God has sent his Holy Spirit to your heart, to my heart. It will show no, no less of times that God drew us to him. It will, the record will show many times he has sent his angels to beat back the, uh, the forces of Satan from our lives. Second, we show even those challenges he has put on our way so that, it, so that, that God wants to use to draw us to closer to him. Those challenges that we, we consider as challenges, not knowing that the purpose is to draw in draw us closer to him. The Bible tells us that everything will be right. But everybody, everybody will see it. On that day, me and you will understand more deliberately the magnitude of his love. Because today, we don't even, many people don't recognize, they, they, don't, they don't appreciate the magnitude of God's love. On the final analysis, each of us will see that Calvary is enough. Calvary is enough to save you. Calvary is enough to save me. That the blood of Jesus is enough to save every human, humankind. That, that Jesus could not have done anything more. And the Bible tells us that after everybody has said, oh, Jesus, you have done everything you could have done to save this man. And they, we are told that the whole universe, the whole heaven will burst into singing. In Revelation chapter 15, verse 3, it said, the, the, the Bible tells us that the whole universe will burst into, into, into song. Great and marvelous are your works. Lord Almighty, just and true are your ways, O King of the saints. They will sing the song of Moses, the servant of God, and the song of the Lamb, saying, Great and marvelous are your works. Lord Almighty, just and true are his. Because God has done everything he could do to save us. Also, apart from that, that day, we reveal God's mercy and, and, and justice. I believe that on that day, God will establish Christ's throne forever. Today, many thrones, many thrones are contested with the throne of Christ. But on that day, it will be settled once and for all that there's only one throne. That there's only one throne, and that throne is the throne of Christ. That throne will be established forever. From the from when we read our Bible from, from Genesis to Revelation, we see different accounts how God has demonstrated what the end will be. How the end will look like. He has shown, he has tell, he has shown it to us through kingdoms, through empires, mighty empires that came and gone. 
in Genesis, we are told that the days, the days, days before the flood, Noah was preaching, was telling people, was warning them for 120 years about the impending danger. He was warning them, flood is coming, flood is coming, just as it's being said today, that a day, the day is coming, that the, 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 the day of God's return is drawing near. We are told that for over 120 years, Noah was preaching, was warning them about their way. They did not hear. And the flood came. And it was too late for many. Likewise, before Sodom and Gomorrah was destroyed, God sent Abraham and Lot to them, asking them to repent of their ways. To repent of their ways, he gave, the, he gave every inhabitant of the city. He gave them the, an opportunity to accept Christ, God's grace, to repent and, 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 and be made, made whole. It was only after his final warning that the fire fell. The fire fell, and Sodom and Gomorrah became history. Also, for more than 70 years, we are told, the scripture tells us, that Daniel was witnessing God's faithfulness to the Babylon, in, 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 in Babylon. He was telling Babylon, Babylon, repent. Babylon, change your ways of life. Although he was a captive, he was a, he was, he was a slave in a foreign land. He was telling, he, he, he told about seven kings in that Straight of 70 years. He was telling that great kingdom that, what, that, they, what, that, that God, they, but they were told they rejected God's invitation. The whole city rejected, the whole kingdom rejected God's invitation. That great kingdom worshiped the idols of their own making. They exalted their own so called wisdom, just as we are exalting our wisdom today. Just as we are exalting our own kingdom today, our wisdom. Above the God's divine revelation. But we are told a day came when the, when the cup of their sin was full. And the God raised Cyprus, he, 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 he king of a, 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 another country, to come and destroy Babylon. A day is coming, my brother and sister. No matter how long, no matter how long we spend on this earth, a day is coming that everything is going to come to an end. Also, lastly, I believe that on that day, it will also, the, the, the judgment, the day of judgment will also reveal the same righteousness of Jesus Christ and that he will triumph over all Satan's and power of hell. In our Bible this morning, God, God, the Bible tells us that God invited us. God invited us. Let us in Revelation chapter 4, verse 1 and 2. He said, After this thing I look and behold, a star standing open in heaven. God opened heaven, God opened a door. He said, Come and look inside. Come and look inside and see what's about to happen. He said, and he said, Behold, a door standing open in heaven. And the verse 4 which I had was like a trumpet speaking with me, saying, Come up here. God is calling us as a, as a people this morning. Come up here and see what's about to happen. He said, come up here and I will show you things which must take place after this thing. He said, immediately I was in the spirit. And behold, a throne set in heaven. And, and one who sat on the throne. The one who sat on the throne. Through the open door, we see a, 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 we see a throne set in heaven. And God, we are told that God is sitting upon his throne as the rightful owner, as the rightful ruler of the universe. He's the rightful owner. Let, no, let nothing deceive you. There's only one ruler of the universe. And that's one, that is the king of kings. We see rainbow, we are, we are told, when we read that photo in that scripture, we see rainbow, rainbow rep represents that God is just and right. We see him around the throne that reveal God's justice and mercy. And by the time we go to chapter 5 of that revelation, 
We are told that a, sc a scroll that contains the eternal record of every body of the universe. A scroll. And they said, oh, the, all the records of every human being that has ever lived is on that scroll. And the Bible tells us that the, there was a voice that who is worthy to receive this? Who is worthy to open this scroll? Revelation chapter 5, verse 1. He said, and I saw in the right hand of him who sat on the throne a scroll written, inside and on the back, sealed with seven seals. Verse 2. He said, then I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, who is worthy to open the scroll and to lose its seal? And we are told afterward there was a total silence in heaven. Nobody, they could not see anybody. They, they thought, oh, the end, the end has come. There was total silence. But by the time we got to verse 8 and 9, we are told somebody stood up. Somebody, one body. He said, so, he said now when I, I are taking the scroll, verse 6, I think it's verse 6. And I looked, behold, in the midst of the throne and of the four living and in the midst of the elders stood a lamb as though it has been slain. A lamb as though he has been slain. Which is our Lord Jesus Christ, because he has been slain. Having seven arms and seven eyes, which are seven spirits of God, sent out in, in, into all the earth. Verse 7. Then he came and took the scroll out of the right hand of him, who sat on the throne. And verse 8. Now when he has taken the scroll, the four living creatures and the twenty-four elders fell down before the lamb, each having a harp and golden bowl full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. And verse 9. And they sang a new song. He said, you are worthy. He is worthy to take the scroll and to open the sea, for you were slain and you have redeemed us to God by your blood out of every tribe and tongue and people. Praise the Lord. He is only one. He is the only one that is worthy to receive this, to open the scroll. And on that day, he will triumph over Satan. He will triumph over every kingdom. He will triumph over every, every, every power of earth. He is your Savior. He is my Savior. He is, the Bible tells us that he is the Lion of the Tower of Judah. He is the Root of David. He has prevailed to open the scroll. He is worthy to take the scroll and open the sea because he was slain. He was slain. So he is your Savior. He is my, he is my, your, savior, my, your Savior. So what am I saying this morning? That each one of us, we still have the opportunity. We still have an opportunity to make amendment in any way, in any way that we are still putting God on trial. Because God, has, th that issue has been settled for a long time. We should not be deceived. So if there's any time, if there's ever been a time to be sure that your life is right with Jesus, that time is today, not tomorrow. Today, not tomorrow, is the day you need to be certain that there's nothing between you and your soul. That there's nothing between your, you, your, between your soul and your Savior. Because we are living at the end of judgment hour. The hour of judgment is approaching. And it's a time of report card. What would be your report card? What would be my report card? What will, what will it be? If I may ask, as we are seated this morning, if I may ask you, if I may ask myself, when was the last time you read a, pa a passage in, this, in the Bible and you said to yourself, I really need to make a change in my life? That, I, that the word you read so makes so much impact in your life that you, you, your, you tell yourself, oh, I need to make an amendment. The great and powerful ba ba Babylon fell not because of ignorance, but because he, he failed to do what he knew. He failed to do what he knew. The Bible tells us in Daniel chapter 5, verse 22, when he was, when he was destroying uh, 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 Babylon in the, in the, in the time of in, uh, King Bashar, he told him, Daniel chapter 5, verse 22, he said, But you, his son, best Azar, have not humbled your heart, although you knew all this. 
Not because they don't know. Not because they don't know what is right. It's not, we are, today, we are living in a world not because we don't know what is right. But we want to be politically correct. It has been said that our great sin is not ignorance, but the human act of rebellion against the principles of error. And one man put it away this way. He said the difference between a doctor and the Christian is this. He said the doctor judges the world of God. But the, a Christian allowed the world to judge them. A doctor. A doctor. He, he judges the word of God. And today we see, we can see many judges judging the word of God today. But a Christian allowed the word of God to judge them. Which one are you, my brother? Which one are you, my sister? Is the word of God judging you? Or are you the one judging the word of God? Which one are you? Are you allowing the word of God to change you? Or you are just playing God, my sister? Well, it is true that God is merciful. But I want to remind each of us here that each of, each, each of us, we have an open account with God. And every day, that, that account is being filled up. God, God is the only one who knows the amount when that, when that account will be full. He is the only one who knows when that account will be full. Whether it's going to be for $10, whether it's going to be for $1 million. But each one of us has an open account. He is the only one who knows when the account is full. And we are told that when that account is full, then the ministry of his word begins. The account is closed, and the fine patient ceases. So, as I close this morning, I leave you with Revelation chapter 22, verse 1, 11 and 12. Revelation chapter 22, verse 11 and 12. It says, that he who is unjust, let him what? Let him be unjust too. He who is filthy, let him be filthy still. He who is righteous, let him be righteous stay. He who is holy, let him be holy stay. He said, and behold, I am coming quickly. God is coming quickly, my brother and sister. He said, I am coming quickly, and my reward is with me to give to everyone according to his work. Your choice, my choice, will determine our eternal destiny. Um, but I submit to you this morning that God has done everything he could have done to save us. The choice now lies with you. The choice now lies with me. Can we rise? Can we rise this morning? Can we rise about, can we rise and, and thank God for his word? Because the Bible tells us that his word is set you in heaven. Heaven and earth may pass away, but none iota of his word will pass without fulfilling his purpose. The world, we decide this world we live in will pass away, but not one of his world will pass away. His world is set to in heaven. There is no controversy. There is no controversy about the word of God. I want to thank God for his word this morning. Lord, we bless your name for your word this morning. Lord, we appreciate you because your word is, we not, we not return to you for the Lord. Lord, we thank you because it is said to you, you in your word of God, you said, Heaven and earth may pass away. Oh, kingdom may go, kingdom will come, but your word will remain with sin. Lord, we bless your name for the, for, the, for, the, for the validity of your word of Lord, for the reality of your word of Lord. We thank you this morning. May say, May your name may Lord be glorified, O Lord. I want to talk, want to ask God this morning. We want to ask God for mercy and forgiveness. In any way, in any way, you have not you have, have not measured up before God, O Lord. In any way that we, if the if the road course should enter, if today should be the day of judgment, in any way that you will not be that you will not be found wanting, you, want, you still have the opportunity this morning. You want to ask God to have mercy. You want to ask God for mercy in any way that you have not met, mentioned your Lord. Lord, we ask for mercy this morning. Lord, we ask for mercy. We ask for mercy, O Lord. We are not we are we are we are, we are not who we are, we are supposed to be, O Lord. Lord, we plead for your mercy. We thank you because we still have the opportunity to make amendment, O Lord. 
God, we give you praise. We give you honor. Thank you for that thing, Father. And lastly, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 12 and 13. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 12 and 13. Said now, if anyone be on the foundation with God, if you build with silver, if you build with precious stone, whether if you build with wood, if you build with air, if you build with straw, he said, each one work will become manifest. For the day we disclose it. A day, the day of judgment we disclose it. He said, for the day we disclose it. Because it will be revealed by fire. And the fire will test it. That what kind of work have you done? What kind of work have you done? You want to ask God for mercy this morning. In any way, you have been piling off massive amount of woods. What happened to a wood? When fire comes to the wood, the fire will burn it to ashes. What happens to what happens to what will happen to air and straw? Fire will consume it. You want to pray this morning, you want to ask God for mercy. In any way that you have been piling up massive amount of woods and airs and straw that will not survive the flame. That God, that today will be a turning point in your life. That today will be a turning point in my life. In the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we ask of God. We don't want our work to be consumed by fire, O oh Lord. So therefore, we ask, O oh God, that in any way that we have been piling up, O oh God, woods, straw, as, as, as our work unto you, O oh Lord, that we be consumed by fire. Lord, we ask, O oh God, let today be a turning point, O oh Lord. That from today, O oh God, our work unto you, O oh God, will be, will be of gold, will be of metal, that will survive the test of fire, O oh Lord. In the name of Jesus. Please, O oh Lord, make us, O oh God, to be satisfied with temporary things, O oh Lord, and give us, O oh God, the irrepressible desire to see you glorified, O oh Lord. In the name of Jesus. Thank you for that thing, Father. Lord, we bless your name this morning. We bless your name this morning. We thank you because we still have the opportunity to make amendment. Some people, they, did not, they don't have that. They, they, they are, their chapter have closed. And what is left for them is the day of judgment. But we, we still have the opportunity. Lord, we receive the grace even to make that amendment, O oh Lord. We receive the grace, O oh God, so that on that day, you, 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 we will be we, we able to say that indeed we are your children. In the name of God the Father. In the name of God the Son. In the name of God the Holy Spirit. Thank you for that thing, Father. In Jesus' Mighty name, we pray.